I've been going back and forth for a while on whether or not to make this video. Hi, this is Andrea Shulman, and in today's video, I'm going to do a book review on a course in miracles and usually the the books and the stuff that i talk about on this channel are specific to the law of attraction but i know that a lot of people out there are on my, my channel that watch my channel are also interested in spirituality and metaphysics and i have really felt for a long time that i really ought to make a review on this book and so today I'm gonna to do it. But first, if you're watching this video on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications because I do make videos like this one every single week. Now, before we even get going on this, have you read this? Have you read it? What do you think of it? What are your thoughts? Drop below in the comments. Tell me where you're at with this piece of literature, okay? Because, my perception of this is that if I was going to score this book, it gets like a 10 out of 10 for polarizing people. And what I mean by that is people tend to have strong feelings about this book. And I understand why. Okay, so let me just give you a little bit of background on A Course in Miracles if you haven't heard of it before. And I'll tell you a little bit about how I found it because when I, when I got into this, I had no idea what I was getting into, just to put that out there. But I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background on what this is about. So A Course in Miracles is a text that was scribed, I believe through automatic writing Automatic writing is kind of like channeling, but instead of the channeler speaking, they write it out. All right, so it was scribed by a woman named Dr. Helen Shuckman, PhD. Okay, so this was a woman, she's no longer alive. Okay, in fact, nobody knew that she was the one who wrote the book until after she died. But she was a professor of, I believe, medical psychology at Columbia. So a very intelligent woman who had a PhD, and this was back when it wasn't very common for a woman to get a PhD. In fact, women were considered to be doing pretty good if they got a bachelor's in her time. So a very intelligent, research-driven kind of woman. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of background on Helen Shuckman because I think it's relevant to my review here on this book. Helen Shuckman came from what I found were Jewish parents, but kind of loosely observed Judaism. And she dabbled in a variety of religions before she settled on being agnostic, meaning kind of ambivalent, whether or not she believed in a God or not. But she was very interested in research and very keen on facts. That's, that's really kind of where she was coming from. And according to the text, there was a, a period in time where she was having a hard time with, the, with a coworker. And through that situation, this came through her and the two of them worked together. She basically channeled the information and the co-writer, the, co, the co-worker that she had been struggling with was the one who recorded it for her, okay? So, that's not really the the, uh, the polarizing part, all right? But what this is supposed to be, the way that it comes across, is that it is a channeling of Jesus or Christ consciousness. And that's what makes this book very, very polarizing. And so I've seen people, a variety of different people who are skeptical or afraid to read this book. And I got into this before I even really knew what the, the what in the heck I was reading. <laughs> but after finding it and looking into it, I've come across a lot of people who have very strong opinions about it because, because it's written as, as Jesus, Jesus is the one that's speaking. People who come from a very strong Christian background or who are very Christian in nature, a lot of times 
they don't like this book. Now, I'm not saying all of them because I don't speak for, for Christianity, okay? I, you, everybody's got their own way of doing things, right? But I've, I've met a number of people who are Christian who take issue because um, in this book, Jesus will kind of set the record straight on a few things. And people who are Christian don't necessarily like that. On the flip side, people who are spiritual and not religious a lot of times take issue with this book too because it's written from the perspective of Jesus. It talks about Jesus. It talks about the Bible. It talks about God. And people who are spiritual and not religious sometimes don't want to hear about that. So this book can be very polarizing. And even from my own perspective, when I read this book, or when I, when I started reading this book, um, the further I got into it, I started to get, for lack of a better word, kind of scared, kind of shook up. And I'm not entirely sure why, but I feel like for me, this book really forced me to confront any kind of residual fear or anxiety that I had regarding spirituality, God, Jesus, all of that kind of stuff. Because I don't know what everybody's religious background was or, or how you were individually raised. I was raised Catholic. So I grew up in a Catholic home, kind of like Helen Shuckman in that my parents weren't too, too into it, okay? But we still went. I went to Sunday school, CCD. I got confirmed and did all that stuff. Um, but I never felt particularly connected to the Catholic Church. And that's not to say that the Catholic Church can't be an excellent source of connection because I do have some relatives that are like super Catholics and they are some of the most inspired people that I know. So this isn't to say that Catholicism or Christianity cannot be a very strong faith that really does connect people because I think it can be but for me it wasn't wasn't really calling me all right so I moved away from um, Christianity from Catholicism and kind of like Helen Shuckman took a more agnostic view for a period of time in my life where I didn't know if there was a God or not or what to believe in and I didn't really care at that time um, as I got into the law of attraction and more into spirituality I have found more of a spiritual side of faith so I identified more with the spiritual, not religious set of people, but I've been in both camps. I've been in the religious camp and I've been in the spiritual camp. And even having a foot in each camp, this was still brought up within me a lot of feelings about, um, you know, just fear or worry or concern about the biblical terminology, how it was being used, what was being said about it. So I would say right off the get, this is not light reading, okay? And as you can tell, <laughs> this is like a thick text. I would say that if you read this book, I would assume it's probably gonna challenge a lot of your belief structures. And so it takes a degree of open-mindedness to really get even get into this thing. And I, I pride myself on being very open-minded. I mean, I fell down the rabbit hole a long time ago and this was still challenging for me um, initially. But I want to tell you, I think it's relevant because I, I want to kind of tell you how I found this. Because I feel that this text is a really good example to me of when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. <laughs> so something that you may have heard me talk about on my channel is that I used to be addicted to opiates. Um, I used to drink a lot of alcohol, used to be bulimic and managed to cure all of those in August of 2016 through the use of Ibogaine therapy, which you may not know what that is, but um, it's basically a hallucinogenic plant from Africa that is said to have very medical, medicinal powers to cure addiction, and it certainly did for me, okay? So I had this very powerful experience in August of 2016, um, and got clean and all this stuff just wiped out of my life very quickly thankfully but at the same time I lost a very significant friendship I lost a best friendship 
And at the same time, along that timeline, an associated network of friends as well. And a lot of times people notice this with the law of attraction or with spirituality, which is that as you shift and change, sometimes that can happen where the people that you're around suddenly fall out of the picture. And it didn't happen to me for a long time, but when it happened, oh my goodness, it happened like big time. Like I lost a best friend and I lost like nine very good friends. And you know, these aren't teenage relationships. These are like m mature women like myself. So, you know, their friends, their, their families, like this giant network of people that I was very much entrenched in was suddenly gone. Okay, and so this time period of getting sober was a time of really just the whole foundation of where I was in the world dropped out of the picture. And for about the next year and a half, there was this very interesting phenomenon of watching this network fall further and further away. And at the same time, there was like this new cast of characters that started popping up. And it was a very bizarre thing. Maybe you've had this experience before where you meet somebody and it's kind of like you've known them your whole life. Like you suddenly, like you just know that person. Well, I had this rapid succession, of probably at least four or five people that came into my life suddenly, very dramatically. And I felt like I just knew them intensely, very quickly, bonded with them very quickly. And then suddenly, they were gone in a very dramatic fashion. And so there was this dynamic of just feeling like within relationships, there was no stable footing. Everything that I had known had gone away. And there was these very strange occurrences of people coming in and then going, people coming in and then going. And it left me feeling very disoriented. And so in March of last year, about a year and a half after I got sober, I was just feeling very ungrounded and decided that I wanted to go visit my brother. And my brother is somebody I've always been very close to and he always kind of has this calming, grounding presence on me. So I went ahead and booked a flight and went to go see him. Now how does this, this relate to this book, okay? Well, I was waiting for my to get called for my flight. And about 10 minutes before the flight, we're scheduled to, to get on board. They come over the intercom and let us know that the flight's not gonna have any Wi-Fi. And you know, that's just not gonna do because I was relying on the Wi-Fi for entertainment um, during the flight. I assumed that the plane was gonna have it. So immediately I like pick up my phone. And I'm like, okay, I gotta find something to read, something. And I always kind of have in the back of my mind a list of books that, I, that I'd like to read, because there's so many, you can't read them all. Um, and this was a book I'd heard of many, many times. I didn't know anything about it, like nothing. But suddenly it popped into my mind, Course in Miracles. I'm like, okay, go online, find it, download it to my phone, okay? So we go ahead and board the plane, get on the plane. Before the plane even starts to take off, I'm seated and I'm, I'm reading through and I get through the first couple of chapters and I remember that the plane is starting to take off and it's rumbling. I mean, it was all very cinematic, okay? <laughs> and the plane's starting to take off and I am fighting back tears from rolling down my face. And I'm almost like getting teary now thinking about it. Um, and it hit me, I didn't see it coming, but it hit me like a ton of bricks, which is why I kept reading it. And it's been something that I've been looking over and reading more and more as I go along. And it took me a while to even realize that this was supposed to be Jesus. <laughs> but by the time I got into it, I was so far into it that it was like, okay, well, let's just keep, keep investigating it. And I personally have had a very profound experience with this book. And why I tell you all of this, the story of building up to this is because like I said, to me, this is a book of when the student is ready, the, the teacher will appear. And I was in a point of really wanting to understand relationships, really feeling very ungrounded and was going to see my brother. And one of the big themes that they talk about in this book is this idea that we're all here together as brothers. They always use the word brother or Jesus uses the word brother. And that you are here to be a teacher and a student with fellow man. And that how you heal yourself is through healing how you observe and deal with your brother. 
And because all of that ties in so nice and neat, and even the idea of me like having this epiphany moment while the plane is taking off, to me just made it feel like this was a very important book for me to read. I don't think I was ready to read this book a week before I read it. I think it really has to be a book that you're kind of ready for. I think it's very aptly named as a course. <laughs> you might more adequately um, term it as an odyssey because I, I study this thing now kind of as if it were a Bible. And I know that sounds kind of intense. I, and I don't mean that I'm sitting here reading it every day, but I keep coming back to it. And even the way that it's structured is very interesting because there's a lot of text, but then at the same time, there's lessons. There is supposedly, it's 100, 375 lessons one for every day of the year that are designed to alter the way that you think and to get you closer to God consciousness, unity consciousness, Christ consciousness, whatever label you want to put on it. I haven't gone through all the lessons. I've gone through about a hundred of them. Sometimes I get going and I put it down and I'm not that interested anymore, but I keep feeling called back to it. So I kind of feel like once this thing comes into your life, if it grabs hold of you, this is just kind of, it's a, piece of material designed to get you to work through something. So it's very hard to kind of give this thing an actual rating, all right? Um, so I'll give it a few ratings. First rating I'll give you on it is ease of reading. <laughs> it gets about a one. It's not that easy to get through quickly, I don't feel. I feel that, again, this is something you would probably pick up and put down, pick up and put down. As far as it being a text that you would read for enjoyment, I think initially I would have probably given it like a, like a, like a three. Now that I'm kind of familiar with it, I'd, I'd give it more like a four. And if I was gonna rate this book based on how helpful is it in the spiritual journey? I'd give it a five, but you really kind of have to be ready for it, for it to really take you somewhere. Because after, you know, really getting into this book, my life started to, to change in very positive ways. I started to realize that I was holding on to things from the past and I really got more in flow with really being in alignment with my joy. And this book really helped me with that. It's really been a great source of assistance in my journey with the law of attraction that I talk about so much here on this channel. Keep in mind what you'd be getting into when you, when you read this. And for me, it's been very helpful to Try and don't worry so much about the terminology that's being used, but listening to the undercurrent of the message. For me, it really has helped me bridge spirituality and religion for me. Okay, it's helped me kind of bring those two together. And I know that not all religions are based on Jesus, all right? But for me and my background, it really helped me kind of merge those two ideas together, which for me is very useful, very helpful. And I, that's one of the reasons why I bring up Helen Shuckman, um, her history in this book too, is because she was an agnostic. And, and I think it's very interesting that this book was received by someone who was very ambivalent about religion, very kind of, ah, you know, faith, no faith, who cares? It's kind of as if, if I were to look at this from a law of attraction perspective, she was in a very low state of resistance about what a correct spiritual or religious idea was, which allowed her to channel through material that really doesn't ascribe to either camp fully but really integrates the underlying message very well about love and unity. All right, I hope that you've enjoyed this long-winded review on A Course in Miracles. If you like this video, I have another review on another uh, polarizing piece of material in the spiritual community called The Secret. If you'd like to watch that review, you can go ahead and check in the description for a link to go ahead and watch that review now. Also, if you're new to my channel, please make sure to check out my Law of Attraction test. I also have a link in the description for that Law of Attraction test if you'd like to go ahead and take it now. Thanks so much for watching this review on A Course in Miracles. Have a great day. Bye-bye.